All right, what is happening everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're gonna be talking about creating our own functions inside of C++. Before we get started, please do me a favor and check out our sponsor, Embarcadero C++ Builder, specifically the Community Edition, which is a free version you can get if you are earning less than 5,000 a year from your software projects. This is a fully featured IDE for building iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac OS apps. This is all from a single C++ code base, so you can make one application that deploys to all of these different applications from a single C++ code base. When it comes to the user interface, Embarcadero C++ Builder has an awesome visual UI designer with drag and drop capabilities for pixel perfect, platform specific styling. So don't go wasting your time trying to make user interfaces. Get things done quickly with C++ Builder. Check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. So in the last video, what did we do exactly? Well, we talked about calling a function. Specifically, we called this power function, or pow, I guess I should say. And this is from CMath. Well, to illustrate creating our own functions, I'm going to create a function very similar to pow. So what if we wanted to create this function ourselves? Let's say this was not made available to us. Let's go through that process. Now, making functions is not too hard. You basically copy the format we have here for this main method. We have a return type, an identifier, parentheses, and then curly braces. And all of the code goes inside of those curly braces. So where exactly do we define this function? Well, we could either do it before main or we can do it after. I tend to put it before because if you put it after, you're going to have a separate declaration from the definition. And I'll explain that in just a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it return a double similar to how pow returns a double. We're gonna call this one power. And then we're gonna have parentheses and inside of here, we're going to have a base. I'm gonna make that a double. And then I'm just going to have an int exponent. And then we put the curly braces. So that's the general structure. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say return 0.0. .0. So now let's change our code a little bit. We're going to get rid of this line and we're gonna replace it. So we're gonna say double, I'm gonna call it my power. And then we're going to call that power function, pass in the base and the exponent like so. And then when we print that, we're going to name that my power. So just so you have an idea what's going on here, we're calling our own function right here. Here is the usage of our function up here. We assign that to a variable called my power, and then later we output my power. Awesome. So everything else is going to stay exactly the same. So let's run it just to make sure we don't have any errors. You can see we don't, so that's good. When we run this thing, it's not going to give us the result we expect because if we put 10 and three, for example, we just get zero. That's because the method is just returning 0.0. .0. So what we have to do in here is actually do a calculation. Before we dive into that, I wanted to talk a little bit about declaration and definitions. So this function here is doing two things. It's declaring and it's defining. Occasionally you'll see these as two separate things. And I'm gonna show you how that looks. So the first thing is we're gonna take this function more than likely that's gonna be at the bottom, and then we're going to have the declaration at the top. So what is that gonna look like? It's gonna look very similar to this right here, so I'm gonna copy that, paste that up here, and then we're gonna get rid of the variable names, like so, and then put a semicolon. So this is a declaration, and now we have the definition down here. Sometimes you'll see this in a separate file, like a heading file, so that's something you could include in your other files, like so. If you don't have this function declaration here and you have your function defined at the bottom, it's not gonna work out. You can see when I compile, I get an error. And when I scroll up a little bit, it says use of undeclared identifier power. So when we have that declaration up here, it avoids that problem and we can compile. And you can see no errors. Personally, I prefer just to put the definition at the top. That makes more sense to me, less work. There we go. Maybe when we get into separate file compilation, we might make the declaration separate. But for now, I don't see no point in that. Just a bunch of extra work for me to do. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. Okay, so now for the actual calculation part. Well, this might be a little bit beyond what we've talked about in this series. And I think that's okay. If you don't understand all of it, that's fine. Basically, you have to go through an algorithm to calculate the power of something. So in order to do this, we're gonna have a double variable and we're just gonna call this result. And we're gonna set the equal to one. So basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna multiply this result by base to increase the value, and we're gonna do that each time for however high the exponent is. So if the exponent's three, we're gonna multiply the result times the base three times. You'll see what I mean. In order to do this, we're gonna use what's known as a for loop. 
So just follow the syntax here if you've never used a for loop. You put for and then you put the parentheses and then you put the curly braces. Inside of the parentheses, you're going to say int i equals zero, semicolon, i is less than exponent, semicolon, i plus plus. So if the exponent is three, this is the code you need for this loop to run three times. And then all we say in here is result equals result times base. So let's say the base is 10 and the exponent is three. What's gonna happen? Well, we're gonna take one times 10, which will give us the value 10. That's the first time around. Then we're gonna do it again and we're gonna do 10 times 10, which will be 100. That's the second time around. And then the third time it's gonna be 100 times 10, which will be 1,000. And that'll give us the value. Finally, at the end, we need to return the result. And that is the output from the function. That's what we're using down here when we assign it to a variable. So let's save, make sure we did our algorithm right. Save and compile. And when we run this thing, we put in a base, let's say 10, exponent of three, and we get the value 1000. Oh yeah, uh-huh, we created our first function. So this is pretty cool. Now, if you don't understand all this code in here, that's fine. And if you do understand, just bear with me as I try to explain things. But basically what's going on is we are using this result as a value we're going to continually increase until it calculates the final result. The only way we can do that is by multiplying it by the base, however many times the exponent is. So if it's three, we're gonna multiply it by the base three times, which is what this line is doing right here. Finally, we have to return that value using this return statement. Now, a really important thing that I wanna call out is that these here are known as parameters, and when we pass in values, these are known as arguments. They are two separate variables. That means they don't have to be named the same. So I could say this is called base, and I could basically replace anywhere in this function with that new variable, and it's going to work exactly the same. You can see it still compiles, and it's still going to run. So you could basically disassociate these two things. This function serves as its own entity, and the calling, we can pass whatever we want in here. We can put in a variable name, we could pass in a value, we could say the base is 10, whatever it is. So don't think that the names have to match, it's just convenient that they do, but they're two separate variables. So I'm gonna put this back to base, instead of base, you know, just keep it clear. And that, my friends, is how we create functions. Keep in mind that this is returning a value, so in order for this function to actually be useful, we have to do something with that value, either assigning it to a variable and then outputting it, or we could just output it directly, we could use it inside of an expression, whatever we want to do. So to summarize, we create a function by giving it a return type, an identifier, parameters, and then a body. At the end, we need to return a value that is of the type that we're putting as the return type here. And then we need to use that value in the calling program. So the calling function over here is using that value by assigning it to a variable. The other thing is that these variables are separate than these variables. It just so happens that they have the same name. That's fine to do because they're in different scopes, but if we went down here and tried to recreate one of these variables, it wouldn't work. So if I said int base here and tried to compile, you can see I get an error. And it says previous definition is here. So you can't use the same variable names inside of the same curly braces, but these are separate curly braces, so it works. That's all I got for you guys on creating your custom functions. Hopefully that was nice and easy for you guys. We're gonna do this a lot throughout the series, so if you still feel a little rough on this, don't worry, maybe watch this video one more time, get some practice creating your own functions, and in the upcoming videos, we're gonna do this a lot more. So it's gonna be pretty sweet. Please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video, and don't forget to check out the next one. Thanks.